Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome to an all new super edition of Talking Movies. As always, I am your host, the real Gino, Gino Reynolds. And today, uh, I'm playing a bit of catch up because the last couple of weeks I've been kind of sick off and on. And while I have been seeing movies, I just haven't been able to muster the energy to review them or anything like that. So we're going to be playing catch up very quickly with seven different movies that I have seen. So without any wasting any time, here we go. And by the way, there will be spoilers, maybe. Uh, I'm just going to talk about them and where the conversation goes, it goes. Uh, the first movie is Green Book, which you know that I got to see half of before, and I finally got to finish watching it. Um, this is about an Italian-American bouncer who's been laid off, and he's given the opportunity to drive an African-American musician uh, on a concert tour in the Deep South, which in the 60s, that would have been a bit of a problem. Um, and it's based on a true story. Um I'm a little conflicted with this one because I did like the movie and I like the performances, especially from Viggo Mortensen and Mahersh Ali. But um, from what I understood, uh, the son of uh, Viggo Morton's character's to uh, character, Tony Lip, uh, was involved with making this movie and apparently got permission from Dr. Don Shirley, the guy that Mahersh Ali plays, uh, to do the story after he passed away. But then now it turns out that uh, Shirley's family uh has basically said he never would have want this story to get out there and that a lot of the story's a lie and there's just all sorts of hubbub about it and Mahersha Ali even apologized to the family because he didn't know or says you know he says if that's true I didn't know um as a movie itself I really liked it a lot of people uh are complaining that uh it it made you know Viggo Morton's character you know the the white savior um, but I thought really both characters had a lot of time to shine and we got, they got to both change as characters where as, uh, Tony Lip was racist and, uh, Don Shirley's, uh, was, uh, just very, he, he didn't know where he belonged and he was kind of away from his family and he was, uh, he was, uh, he was alone and he had secrets and, um, I thought that this this trip that they took, they both changed and they both learned from it. And I and I thought they did a really good job uh, in showing that story. There's a lot of good humor in the movie as well, um, and some serious stuff, um, especially when it deals with the uh, secrets of Doctor Don Shirley's life. At least with the way one person's telling the story, because who knows what's true when there's conflicting. Uh, stories, you know, in this based on a true story. So, but I, but as a movie itself, I thought it did a really good job. The performances are really were really good. Uh, I did like Linda Cardellini as Viggo Mortensen's character's wife. Um, the movie I thought was just a solid look at two guys who needed to change things in their lives in this trip. Uh, brought those changes upon their lives. So I would recommend this movie. That being said, I'm a little iffy on it again because uh, of the possible uh, lack of truth in it. So who knows what the real truth is. Uh, the next movie is The Mule, uh, which is also supposedly based on a true story. But from what I understand, what little bit I've read, uh, it's loosely based on uh, a true story. And it's about um, a 90-year-old uh, who has just lost his house and his marriage went bad and his daughter hates him and it's because he put work first and he ends up uh working as a drug mule uh for the mexican drug cartel now uh this movie is kind of easy to explain it's clint eastwood directing clint eastwood to play clint eastwood um a lot of people would say the way he's acting it's like that's clint eastwood now um, his character seems very uh, of his own time where, you know, he has like no filter and he because he says some things like some racist things here and there. And it's just like, oh, I didn't know, you know, and that's just kind of how his character acts. Um, his character starts doing this uh, job to make easy money uh, to first help his family and to try to get in back close with them. Uh, and then he also helps his friends out when they need money. He seems to kind of be doing this Robin Hood type thing. Um, and that's actually kind of interesting. The story overall itself is pretty simplistic. Uh, things are going really well. And then 
Uh, the drug boss, which by the way is called Latone in this movie, but he's supposed to be El Chapo, which they're definitely taking liberties here because Latone dies in this movie and El Chapo, uh, well, he's still on trial right now. So there's definitely some liberties taken and first everything's great and it seems like this is easy money, but then when the cartel changes, uh, the job gets a lot harder and deadlier. Um, and Clint Eastwood's character and, you know, his life is in danger and he ends up disappearing, uh, because his ex-wife gets sick and that leads to more problems. Um, the biggest problem I had with this movie was the ending. Uh, first, um, when he just in court gives up and says, I did it, which we'll talk about that in just a sec. Um, his daughter cracks a joke and it's like this serious scene and he's off to prison. She goes, well, at least we know where you'll be now. And it's just like, wow, that's, that was a pretty bad joke and bad timing for a joke. Um, but his character in real life probably would have gotten a deal to give up drug cartels and things. Um, but in this, in this movie, he's just like, I did it. I give up. I did bad things for my family, but I did bad things. And he goes off to prison for the rest of the life to tend to his flowers. And that just kind of bothered me. The movie's not bad, but I wouldn't rush to the theaters to see it. Um, this one, I'm not wasting any time on mortal engines. Um, it had a cool poster. That, that's about it. It's, it's your typical post-apocalyptic or, or dystopian YA type movie where the younger, you know, teenagers are the heroes. And there's, uh, there's of course, a, a, the rich bad guys who, you know, they have ulterior motives and it's one of those movies where, you know, these moment leads to moment, leads to moment, leads to moment, but all these moments have to happen for it to work out perfectly. And honestly, I was just bored most time. The, I will say though, the movie looks cool. Uh, so there is that. And also I like Stephen Lang's character of Shrike. He was this like undead assassin, um, who helped raise the main character, uh, after her mother died and then he's hunting her later. But again, it's an, another cog in the wheel of, Oh, this has to happen. This has to happen to make this happen. And honestly, if you're going to watch it, rent it, but I wouldn't say rush to go see it. Uh, but I would also say don't rush to rent it. Uh, the next one, it's hard to talk about, uh, and it's welcome to Marwin. Um, this one is based on a true story as well, even though I'm sure the dolls really didn't come to life. Um, this one I'm just real iffy on. I, I know I didn't really like it. Um, I will say that if I'm that iffy on it, I just didn't like it. Um, I think there's a more interesting story there with this guy dealing with the this the aftermath of this attack um and there is a documentary about it so i think i'd rather see that this uh just turns you know his way of coping uh with the aftermath of this, this attack into this fantasy world that's inside of his head and i get what they were doing but honestly other than with when say the dolls die and stuff, you, they sound and move like dolls and, you know, they clank and, and fall apart and things like that. So that stuff was kind of neat. Some of the effects were kind of neat, but the overall story, uh, deals with inside of his head, there's this witch and he's like, I don't know where she came from. And of course she's the pills. He's overdoing his pills. We know he's overdoing his pills. The doll has the same colors as the pills she tries to give him the pills. It's the pills. And it takes the entire freaking movie for that. So, and then of course, when he gets rid of the pills, that apparently solves all the problems. And, and that I just didn't like the way, I guess I just don't like the way this movie handled, uh, the mental illness aspect of everything. Um, I, again, I think there's a more interesting story there. They also cover the fact that he got beat up because he's into cross-dressing. He has a shoe collection. He likes high heels. Um, and while I give the movie credit for putting that in there, because apparently it's true, I, I can't find all the facts on this one. History vs. Hollywood has not covered it yet. Um, but it's just, I don't... The overall story and the execution of the story, I just, I 
just didn't enjoy. So I, I wouldn't recommend Welcome to Marwin. Um, next to Second Act, I was warned about this one having a twist. Now, if I wasn't warned about this twist, I would have figured out the twist. Um, this is about a woman that works at well, basically a Walmart or something like that. It's, I don't remember what it was called. And she wants to be manager, but she's passed up because she doesn't have a degree. Um, long story short, she ends up at this bigger company uh, getting an opportunity because someone changed her identity and made it look like she had degrees and did all this stuff. And she ends up uh, doing really well in this company and everything. But it also turns out that she gave away uh, an infant daughter years ago. And, of course, the second I heard she gave away an infant daughter, I'm like, of course it's going to be Vanessa Hudgens' character. And it is. And so, yeah, you're going to see that twist coming a mile away. And if that wasn't the twist, I would have been happier. Um, if they would have teased it, fine. But it would have been better if it wasn't. Um, I thought this is going to be like a rom-com. It's more like a dramedy. Uh, and there is like a love story in it with her boyfriend. But this is one of those type of movies where everything ends way too perfect. Um, and I, it's okay to have flaws in your story. So that that's my advice to second act. I didn't get a lot of a lot of enjoyment out of this because it didn't it would be really serious one minute that'd be kind of slapstick the next um so yeah just for me uh this movie everything was way too perfect uh in story um and also is way too long uh it, it's it's about two hours and I mean, it's maybe like a minute or an hour 50, something like that. It felt long to me, but yeah, it's, it's not one that I'd recommend. It's a feel good movie. If you need a feel good movie that ends up perfectly, this one might be for you. Uh, next is Mary Poppins returns. Um, I'm not the biggest fan of the original Mary Poppins. Don't, don't get me wrong. I appreciate it for its, uh, technological side, the cartoons and humans and all the effects and everything. I, that stuff's not what I'm talking about. I'm just not big on the story. I, it's fine. I don't hate it or anything, but it's fine. And I felt the same way about this sequel. Uh, this movie is set 25 years after the events of the first film where the kids are grown up. Uh, Michael has been married and his wife has passed away and he has three kids and it's been about a year and his life's fallen apart and he's about to lose his house. And of course, Mary Poppins comes to save the day. Um, this movie, it feels a lot like the first one. I won't say the songs are going to be as memorable. Uh, if one is memorable, it's going to be the one about how, uh, things aren't really gone. They're just out of place. Uh, that's probably going to be it. Um, you know, same thing with the, with the original, uh, the dance numbers are fine. The, uh, the effects are cool. The cartoons with human stuff's kind of neat. Um, I do think, uh, they're trying to press Lin-Manuel Miranda as a leading man a little too much. And I just, I don't buy it. I mean, the dude is talented. Don't get me wrong. I, I love his score for Moana. Um, and I've never seen Hamilton. I've heard it's amazing and I want to see it, but I don't know. I just don't see him in this role. And they force this love story with him uh, and Jane Banks, um, which if it were cut from the movie, this movie probably would have been a better length. It's about two hours uh, and it could have cut out a decent amount. Um, the story itself, it, it's again, it's a lot like the first movie. Um, so if you like the first movie, you're probably going to dig this one. I did love Emily Blunt as Mary Poppins. Um, I thought she is a great replacement. Um, I thought she handled it really well. Uh, she had the mannerisms down. I thought she had the voice down. It's a fine movie. If, if, if you like this stuff, you're going to like this one too. For me, not really for me. And lastly, uh, we're going to talk about Aquaman. Um, continuing off of Justice League, which this movie barely mentions, by the way, it mentions the fight with Steppenwolf and that's about it. Um, Arthur Curry has to, uh, because the the Atlanteans want to uh, come to the surface and take over. Um, he has to find the the trident of kings and become like the master of the sea. Um, this movie is basically a superhero version of Indiana Jones. Now, don't get me wrong; it's a, it's a compliment, but Indiana Jones is way better. Um, it's just that kind of movie. It's a world hopping. They're looking for an artifact. Um, now when this movie gets nuts, it's at its best, like the last, you know, big fight scene 
and everything else and the the when the sea is going crazy that stuff looks really great the the movie looks great uh jason momoa is again fine as aquaman i felt the same way i felt about him in justice league i mean i i like jason momoa i just don't think he's there yet he, he will get there he's gonna be a good actor it's just i don't think he's as far along as as uh, everyone's giving uh giving him credit for um i don't know if he's lead material yet he will be uh eventually i think um i thought that the acting was fine um i wasn't really wowed by any performance um i thought black manta was wasted they did try to set him up as a character but uh yeah he's granted there's promise of more in the future with him but i thought they kind of wasted him in this movie there was just a lot going on in this one um, it's a fine adventure film. Um, I thought the ending was really cheesy. Uh, I mean, you expect this in this type of movie. It's somewhat of an origin movie uh, where it's, who am I? I'm Aquaman. And they do this uh, They do this weird, you know, the weird freeze frame uh, where it's, I'm Aquaman, and it freezes. And so yeah, it's it's an okay superhero movie. Did I love it? No. Will I watch it again? Probably not. Um, will I be excited for another one? Not really. They're gonna make another one, I'm sure. But it was fine. I didn't hate it. If you really like this one, I get it. But for me, I I'm, I'm hoping in the future for better from DC. That's gonna be all for this catch up edition of Talking Movies. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'm caught up now. Now, even though I'm probably gonna be seeing two movies tomorrow. Uh, and we'll have more to talk about later until next time. As always, I am your host, the real Gino, Gina Reynolds. If you like this video, please subscribe to the real Gino YouTube channel, like this video. And if you have anything to say about any of these movies, please feel free to leave a comment in the section below. I will say if you are going to see any movies this holiday weekend, just go see Bumblebee and Spider-Man instead. See you later.